my uh, WeFax machine here. Prints out all of my weather facts worldwide. Of course, the chart. This is my uh, WeFax machine. Prints out the uh, weather charts. It's going to start it again. I'm going to have the volume turned down when it starts because I don't want to listen to that. But I'm going to leave it up so you can hear the static and hear the start tone. Exactly what it does. I don't need a laptop or a computer here at the nav station. I use paper charts primarily, although I do have the chart plotter here as well as up in the nav station with uh, Navionics Platinum charts as well. And also have a laptop if I need to. Have a portable radio for receiving uh, voice weather fact, or excuse me, voice weather information, uh, as well as I can link that to the laptop if I needed to get a weather fax uh, other than my Wii fax machine here or I could use the M802 as well. That's the start tone that you hear making the machine start all by itself. And uh, I can program this to turn on and off at different times of the day get the exact weather charts that I want or I can just turn it on when I need it and get a couple of charts this way. You can see the charts come out crystal clear. This is just sitting at the dock here, um, you know, with other boats around and shoreside uh, noise and whatnot. Uh, reception is certainly much easier at sea, but looks pretty good here. Okay, I've taken a couple of weather fax charts off the uh, weather fax printer, put them at the nav station here with my uh, passage chart. If I was going to say head up to Bermuda or maybe start looking for a, a time frame when I was going to be leaving for a long passage, I would lay them out on the chart table like this. These are a couple of weather facts charts from uh, three or four days ago. I generally will write, uh, say this time this is a 24 hour wind and weather, excuse me, wind and wave chart. I'll just generally jot that in pencil there. Of course it's printed right here what the uh, times and ballads is. And the bottom of each chart of course is the date and the time that it was transmitted. That's how the time it was transmitted on the radio. And of course they also give you the time that the chart is valid for. So the time the chart was drawn and the time it was valid for is right there on the chart. Here's a gale warning chart from a couple of days ago showing a 48-hour gale warning forecast. Here is a current surface analysis, excuse me, a current wind and wave analysis, or what they call surface. And here is a 24-hour uh, surface analysis forecast. Now I'm going to show you specifically here. You notice these dark lines here going through. That's what I was actually transmitting on the single sideband while I was receiving this weather chart. Uh, transmitting to uh, WLO and then talking to WLO, that kind of thing. Notice there's a couple of minutes that pass through here. And uh, then on another chart here. But uh, these are the, basically the charts that I just took off the, uh, the weather facts a few minutes ago. And as I said, if I was looking at my um, Look at a low pressure here in 24 hours, and look at those isobars. I definitely would not want to be out there uh, in the Gulf Stream off the coast of the Carolinas uh, today, or excuse me, in the next 24 hours or so. Uh, this is the front that uh, just came through here um, last night. Last night, and we've got two fronts back to back that are trailing each other. And let me tell you, that's a hell of a low pressure out there. Uh, it's only the uh, 10th of February, and um, fronts are still pretty doggone strong this time of year. If the weather wasn't like this, or say like uh, like it is here in the next few days, I would certainly take these charts and I would evaluate the weather that was coming up and look at my planning chart. By the way, please forgive this old chart. This, chart, Of course, this is a very, very, very general idea. This is when your initial planning, and that's when you take your weather charts here and you look at what weather your winds and weather you're going to have and then you determine where you're going to sail to because based on the wind. Of course looking at this chart here, very nice about having a paper chart in your hand is um, you know I mean I could do this on a laptop if I wanted to but trying to hang on to a laptop or even a desktop computer at sea and trying to manipulate a mouse and all that way you're trying to hang on. Paper charts work very very well. Again, uh, these are surface charts. The 500 millibar charts are really nice because it gives you an early warning or I should say uh, advanced information as far as planning what weather conditions you're going to have. But uh, preliminarily, I just grabbed the, uh, the surface charts. That happened to be what was printing this afternoon. Uh, again, this is all within the last hour. I tore these off the weather facts just in the last hour while I was doing the DSC test calls and other things here on the boat. So I've had no pre-planning to produce this video at all. I'm just right off the fly. Like somebody said, hey, 
I'm out here, I need some weather information, can you help me with that, or geez, I need... Again, if this weather chart was better, you'd take that information here and you'd go, oh, well, gosh, let's see, maybe I'm going to have some winds out of the, the east for a couple of days, I'd head north, and then maybe the winds are going to turn out of the northwest, and then I can start heading out this way. And that's just a general idea of, give you an idea of how you can start your, your passage planning. Remember, when you're out there, remember, when you're out there, you're going to sail with the weather that you have. But knowing what the weather is going to be like a couple of days ahead of time allows you to determine whether you're going to go east or you're going to northeast or you're going to go north. Heck, whether you're going to turn south and go the other direction. You know, get in better weather. You're not going to be able to outrun one of these fronts. These fronts scream across. You're never going to outrun any of this stuff. Uh, and I don't care if you're in a 60-foot gunboat and you think you can outrun it. You're not. Um, you know, you can get out of the way of a, a slow-moving uh, trough, but you're not going to get out of the way of one of these fronts or one of these these big lows. That's just, you know, 24-hour, 48-hour forecast, things like that. How do you get these? Well, first off, they're transmitted worldwide by numerous stations all over the world. Uh, for uh, the North Atlantic and for most of the Pacific, most people are going to use uh, the U.S. Coast Guard broadcast of uh, weather facts and uh, the uh, far eastern North Atlantic, Mediterranean, and that North Sea. Most people are going to use the uh, British uh, broadcast from the uh, uh, UK Met Center. Uh, it's called GYA, Gulf Yankee Alpha. Uh, also the uh, German uh, Met Center, uh, DWD, uh, they do a wonderful job of broadcasting as well. Uh, Australia, New Zealand also do a wonderful job of broadcasting weather facts charts as well for their waters and for the waters surrounding their nations. On this page, you're going to find links, and again, this page links from the original uh, marine weather page, NOAA marine weather page here, and this page links directly, um, this one right here, excuse me, the radio fax one, this links from there. And here you're going to find links to uh, National Weather Service marine radio fax products and detailed schedules, and then I have that page open, as well as worldwide marine radio facsimile broadcast schedules. And... When we click on those links, we're going to get our schedules from the U.S. Coast Guard broadcast from Boston, from New or from Point Reyes, from New Orleans, from Honolulu, and from Kodiak, Alaska. And these, in addition to those, and I'm going to show you all of those, worldwide marine radio facsimile broadcast schedules. Again, sorry about the handheld camera work, but uh, it's difficult for me to run the laptop and the camera and everything together. Anyway, you can see we have a broadcast from uh, South Africa, from uh, Japan, from China, uh, Taiwan, from Korea, uh, Thailand. Um, we have broadcasts from Brazil, from Chile, as well as Canada, the US, uh, as well as Australia, New Zealand, Greece, Russia, Germany, and the United Kingdom. And uh, this PDF file is 138 uh, pages long, so I'm not going to read the whole doggone thing. But uh, as you can tell, all of the world's radio uh, weather facts broadcast schedules are here. Uh, in general, uh, this schedule here, along with the uh, schedule from the uh, U.S. Coast Guard broadcast here, these are going to be what you're going to print out, and you're going to be able to leave on board your boat, and you're going to be able to get these wonderful weather faxes uh, all the time. Do you happen to be doing, say, an Atlantic Crossing. Uh, the Boston WeFax broadcasts are going to be one of your most popular ones. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through here and see, uh, maybe I want to look at a 48-hour um, uh, surface forecast. So I'll click on that, and there you go. Now, bringing it up on the internet is uh, easy when I'm sitting here at the dock, I'm sure. But uh, to give you an idea, uh, let me go back. Um, actually, let me, let me highlight this so you can see what we're talking about here. Um, here is uh, the east coast of the United States, here is uh, Michigan, Great Lakes, that kind of thing, here's uh, Cuba here, here's Florida right underneath the 26, here's Cape Hatteras, the Chesapeake area here, and uh, goodness gracious, I would certainly not want to be out there <laughs> with those lows this time of year. And this brings up a wonderful point, this is not a, a, a weather seminar, uh, but for anybody considering uh, traveling through the Bahamas or the east coast of the, of the United States, uh, uh, you remember that these continental lows, as they come off here from Canada and they come off the coast, uh, they are very, very fierce storms when they're offshore. They move very, very fast, uh, but the uh, seas and the winds that they produce are something fierce, and it's extremely cold. I wouldn't want anybody to, um, to uh, get caught in those.
Those of you transiting uh, to and from the Caribbean, uh, you're going to probably want to, the New Orleans uh, broadcasts are probably uh, going to be uh, very useful to you. Uh, as an example, if I want to look at a 48-hour surface forecast uh, from New Orleans, here we go. And you can tell much more benign weather down here. Here's this front here. There's a gale up here close to Bermuda. Uh, definitely not the time to be making a passage to Bermuda. But the Caribbean looks very nice, actually. A nice benign weather down here. And again, that's uh, very similar to what this uh, chart is I got here two days ago. Uh, you can see, actually, that um, this front... Oops, trying to figure out if I can hold this here. Anyway, you can see that these fronts here on this chart have moved down here. On this chart, this one has dissipated, and this one has formed a, a new front here. Or combined, excuse me. Schedule, you'll print this out uh, before you leave shore. And then you'll be able to tell whenever you need to turn the uh, WeFax on or turn your computer on. And that's what I'm going to get to here in just a moment. And here's the uh, Western Atlantic uh, image. You can see the, uh, the low here that's uh, swirling around. And you can see the little uh, front here that's it's, uh, trailing across uh, the uh, southern part of Florida. And, of course, you can see the wonderful clear skies they've got down in the Caribbean right now. And right now. I want to make it clear that all of these images I'm showing you, whether they're on this paper here or they're seen here on the laptop of the computer, these are all being transmitted four, six times a day for free. They're updated every six hours. They're transmitted for free worldwide. Uh, you can receive them very easily on board your boat. And the voice weather broadcast that I spoke to you about earlier, that you just turn your radio on and listen to. But if you want to actually get uh, a weather chart on your computer or, or print out something like this, what you kind of need to do is you need to have uh, one of these. A laptop computer or tablet, or you're going to need to have one of these. A weather fax receiver. I actually prefer this, the weather fax receiver, rather than the laptop. Much more uh, reliable system. Unfortunately, the WeFax receivers are very expensive. The Furuno that I've got is over $2,000. Um, most people aren't going to spend that kind of money. They already own a tablet. They already own a laptop. All you need to do is have one cable from your laptop input to your radio's headphone jack right here and some free software. Uh, GetFax is the one that uh, I like. Also, JVCom uh, and uh, CTTY is a, also a wonderful program. And again, these are free programs. Won't cost you anything. The broadcasts are free. Uh, available worldwide, very easily, very reliable, very clear signals. And if you already own the laptop or a tablet, you can hook up to it. it there's no cost to you. You do not need a Pactor modem. I'm going to say this again. You do not need a Pactor modem, nor do you need a subscription to sail mail, nor do you need any high-tech equipment or computer or special training. You do not need a ham radio license or anything like that. These broadcasts are being provided for you by people's tax dollars. So, in effect, we're all paying the freight, so you might as well use it if you're already paying for it. I recommend uh, that you uh, download this schedule and print it out. It's wonderful to have on board, even if you only print it out every couple of years. Uh, keep a hard copy of it. That way you won't be uh, trying to scrounge around on your laptop trying to find it when you need it. And depending upon the area that you're sailing in, I recommend that you also print out the schedule for the uh, particular stations that you might want and the detailed schedules there. Uh, as example, here's the Honolulu schedule. And uh, I have the schedule here for, uh, I believe this is New Orleans. Oh, no, that's Point Reyes, California. Okay. And here is New Orleans. And here is Boston. For those of you sailing the Atlantic, uh, Boston and New Orleans uh, broadcast schedules are going to be important to you. For those of you sailing the Pacific, it's going to be Point Reyes and Honolulu. Uh, for those of you doing uh, an inside passage, maybe going up to Alaska, the Kodiak uh, broadcast schedule is going to be important to you. Uh, for those of you in Europe, you might want to look at the British uh, GYA uh, broadcast schedule, as well as the uh, German uh, DWD broadcast schedule. For those of you in the Pacific, uh, I would look at, um, you know, the Australian and New Zealand broadcast schedules as well. Uh, those of you making high latitude uh, um, uh, trips, uh, you may be looking at, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, a NOAA satellite, 137 meg satellite system. Uh, but you also might want to make sure you're aware of the Chilean, uh, South African, and uh, as well as the New Zealand uh, broadcast as well.